Uh, let's do a little utility. 2012 micro FRQ utility problems. Uh, Teresa consumes both bagels and toy cars. This is giving us her margin utility. What is her total utility from purchasing three toy cars? So she buys one car, she gets a total utility of 10. She buys her second car, she gets a total, she gets a marginal utility of 8. That would give her a total utility of 18. She consumes the third car, she gets a marginal utility of 6. We add that here. We get a total utility of 24. Can we see we just add up the marginal utilities to get the total? Pretty straightforward there. All right. So let's answer that. 24, easy enough. No explanation needed. You don't even have to show how you did it. You could have obviously you could do it in your head. Uh, two, Teresa's weekly income is 11. The price of bagels is $2. $2. Price of toy cars is $1. What quantity of bagels and toy cars will maximize Teresa's utility if she spends her entire weekly income on bagels and toy cars? and explain using marginal analysis. So understand here that it's a bit, as soon as our formula that we have to use here is margin utility over price, uh, our margin utility. We want these two to equal one another. This could be bagels and bagels here and toy cars here. So this, this is our formula. We need to come in here and we take the $2 price and we're going to divide the margin utility by the two dollars. This is going to give us an actual margin utility over price of bagels of four. Obviously, three point five, uh, three, two point five, two, and one point five. We don't have to do anything to this one because dividing by one just gives us the same numbers. But these are the utilities that we have that we're getting per dollar spent. So it would be unfair to look at this bagel and say our first bagel gives us eight utils of satisfaction, of happiness, of value, whatever you want to say, and that the toy car gives us 10. Now, obviously, in that situation, we'd still buy the toy car, but they aren't as close as they appear because bagels cost twice as much. So we have to take that into account uh, and divide that by the price. We'll do this with all of these questions. Um, all right. So our first choice, if we're going to, Teresa's got $11 to spend. Obviously, her first toy car that she consumes gives her 10 utils of satisfaction. That's much bigger than four. So she's going to consume the first toy car. The second toy car gives us eight utils of satisfaction. That's still bigger. It's nothing over here is going to be touched until we get down to four. Now, recognize that we bought one, two, three toy cars. Our fourth toy car gives us a marginal utility of, per dollar spent, of four. Now, so does the first bagel. It doesn't matter which one you choose. They are exactly the same. They give us the same benefit or margin utility. So let's just choose them both because we got 11 bucks to spend. Now it looks like our bagel, our second bagel, gives us 3.5 utils compared to our fifth toy car. Let's go ahead and consume that. We need to keep track of our dollar spent. Two, four, five, six, seven, eight. We got three bucks to spend. Let's do two for another bagel. And two and and the fifth toy car here, which also now notice that this is three. And this is three. Our utilities are equal per dollar spent. And that's how we need to explain it. We would say uh, per dollar spent, the margin utility of bagels, if I could spell bagels, is equal to the margin utility of toy cars. Uh, I would want to just, uh, obviously, let's, let's plug it in. It looks like the utility was... Um, it started out here as six over two dollars, whereas here it was three over one dollar. 
we can see that gives us three there and that gives us three there. Our utilities per dollar spent are equal at that combination of goods. So what is quantity of bagels? Looks like five toy cars and um, three bagels. Now remember the five toy cars and three bagels gives you one point. The explanation is another point. Per dollar spent the margin utility of bagels equals the margin utility of toy cars. Three is going to equal, oops, three. All right, B, assume that the price of wheat, an input in the production of bagels, increases. Will Teresa's demand for bagels increase, decrease, or not change? Bit of a tricky question here. Assume the price of wheat, an input, for the production of bagels increases. Will Teresa's demand for bagels increase, decrease, or not change? So understand this, that you should have recognized that an input is a supply determinant, not a demand determinant. I doubt that Teresa knows what's going on with the price of wheat, right? But suppliers obviously do. When the price of wheat goes up, they're going to produce less of it. Our supply curve would shift to the left. It is not affected, it does not change Teresa's demand at all. It affects the supply curve, and that's exactly how we'd want to explain it. Uh, the wheat is an input for bagels, therefore supply shifts left. Um, it does not affect Teresa's demand um, curve at all. All right, C, suppose that Teresa's income for elasticity for bagels is negative two. Income elasticity. Um, does the value of Teresa's income elasticity indicate that bagels and bagels are normal goods, inferior goods, substitutes, or complements? Uh, you should just have it in your brain that income elasticity involve normal and inferior goods. We'll use Y for income. If income goes up, do we buy more normal goods or more inferior goods? Think about it. If you get richer, you buy more steak or more ramen noodles. Obviously, you buy more steak. This is a positive relationship, both going in the same direction. If it had given us a positive number, we would have known they were normal goods. Since it gave us a negative number, we know they're inferior goods. When income goes up, we consume less inferior goods. Income goes up inferior goods go down. This is a negative relation or an inverse relationship. It will give us a negative number. So we know they have to be inferior goods. All right, D. Suppose that the price of toy cars increased by 10%. Teresa buys 5% fewer toy cars and 4% less of a to different toy block. What are you talking about, College Board? Ridiculous. Calculate the cross price elasticity for toy cars and blocks Toy cars and blocks, cross price, XCD. We need to know our formula. Percentage change in quantity demand of A over percentage change in price. Oh, I should put the change in there, shouldn't I? Of B. What do we know? We know our price. The price of toy cars increased by 10%. Toy cars. And then it looks like Teresa buys 5% fewer toy cars and 4% less blocks. Remember, the XCD is about good quantity demand of A over the change in price of B, two different goods. So we don't need this 5% fewer toy cars because we know what happened to the price of toy cars. We need to know what happened to the quantity demand of the other good, which is a 4% less of toy blocks. 4% decrease or negative of toy blocks. So this should what? Give us, uh, is it 0.4? I think it is 0.4, right? Uh, 0.4, obviously negative. If it's negative, we know um, they are, do they ask us? They just ask us whether it's negative. We would also know that they are complements to one another because it is a negative relationship. Um, all right. I think we're done here. Hope that was uh, clear enough. But uh, if it's not, let me give me some information in the chat. Let me know or in the um, comments.
All right, guys, be safe, take care, and we'll have some more coming your way. Be safe. Bye.